Hey guys, my wife Kira shot a beautiful big fallow buck the other day and I thought I'd spend the time this afternoon butchering him up at home for our use here. Very, very simple butchery here. We're not using any saws or doing anything super fancy. It's literally just going to be going through the seams of all the muscles and cutting the sinew off. Anything that looks a little bit rank will become dog food and everything else will be for us. Um, for this style of butchery, as long as you've got a basic boning knife like this, not expensive, you'll be fine. If you want to maintain the edge while you're doing it to make your life easier, a basic butcher steel like this one will be good too. If you haven't got one of those, then just use a basic hunting knife if you've got one and get one of these at some other point down the road. But you certainly don't need lots of different gear, although it's fun to experiment with other kinds of knives and steels down the line if that's something you feel like doing. This isn't going to be a comprehensive how to butcher an entire deer video. Mainly just me mucking around, seeing if I can get some good camera angles and put something together that's going to be reasonably informative because I'd like to put together some much more detailed videos about butchering up wild game in the future. So if you like what you see, let me know. And if you're a complete newbie, hopefully this helps you out. And if you're not a complete newbie, well, I hope you enjoy it anyway. What we've got here is the entire backstrap section of that big fallow buck. I'm going to say the entire section, I mean all the way from where the pelvis sits, so this would be his back end, through up to the short rib area, the rib cage area, and all the way into the chuck and the neck area. Quite literally, um, this is at the base of his skull. So when I take the back straps out, I go all the way up and take as much neck meat as I can because it works really well for slow cooking stuff. It can work really well for mince as well. A couple things I'll say before I get cutting. You'll see some of this darker coloration on here. That's because the meat has dried out a little bit because I've got it in breathable game bags in my fridge outside. If you use breathable game bags, you're always going to get a bit of rind on there. It's okay. It protects the meat. Just trim it off. It'll be fine. It's much better than leaving it in a plastic bag and letting it sit in its own juices and get all funky. It's much worse. The second thing is a lot of people will actually cut the back strap off around here and leave behind all this because this goes underneath where the shoulder muscle sits on the deer. So I like to have a deer on its side and take the back leg and the front leg off and then I take the entire back strap off in one piece. It doesn't look like much now. But essentially what you want to do is find the seam where the neck piece hits the front of the back strap and do your best to just pull that off. You can see right there, um, the muscle will go underneath a lot of that neck meat. Now what I've done in the past is actually cut the back strap off right here and use this entire section here for slow roasting meat. The further up you come in this area, the tougher the meat gets. So I like to pull this part of the neck meat back and then cut it off just here and keep this entire piece here to trim up for later um, for my slow cooking or for my mince or something like that. So, we've got the back strap section. You'll find that once it's dried out a bit, it's very easy to get your hand on some of these um, silver skins and just pull the ugliness off. And straight away, it already looks like something that you're gonna be much happier to put in your mouth. Just gets hung up a little on the back here. This main muscle goes all the way along here in this direction. And this piece here sits just over the top of it. On much younger animals, you can cut straight through all this silver skin and it won't be that chewy. Because this was a much older animal, I'm gonna take all this silver skin off and this piece here will likely get turned into stir fry meat. You'll see up the front here where it goes into the neck, you can actually use your hands to separate that. And hopefully you can see that seam there. That seam here is the same silver skin as this. So there's no real easy way to get under there besides so just ripping in and seeing how you go. You will tear some stuff. And just expose that whole piece of meat there.
you can see some sinews and silver skins on here that you should trim off. I've cooked that as a whole steak before on the barbecue. It's been fantastic. Our favorite thing to do with this at the moment is turn it into stir fry meat. Now we're starting to get somewhere with what our backstrap should look like. And this knife isn't quite as sharp as I wanted it to be, so I'll get to this thing, which is insane. On a cow, you'd be talking about your um, sirloin steaks here, or if you had your backbone in, it'd be where the T-bone of the porterhouse steaks sit. And the further you get up into here, you're gonna get some of that rib meat. Now, there are a bunch of different ways you can take off this silver skin. I've seen some people cut down this way and then move the knife along here and along here underneath it, like filleting a fish. Um, I tend to just grab a little piece of it up here as long as your knife's sharp enough. And then just run your knife along underneath it. Um, the, rather than do these ones along here and cut along there, get a big enough piece and use some nice uh, long strokes and angle your knife up a bit like this and it will run along underneath that silver skin once you get a good handle and take it off without taking too much meat. You will get a little bit of meat on there but it's nothing to get concerned about. You can see just here, there's a little bit of muscle on top here where the rump muscle kind of comes over the top of the pelvis. So make sure you go underneath that piece of silver skin. Once again, if you leave a little bit of meat on the silver skin, it's not the end of the world. You can trim it off a few minutes later. Take your time with it. Now, a couple little bits on there like this, don't really have to stress too much about. But now we're looking at something which we can recognize as a nice backstrap that we want to put in our pan. I like to flip it over and just double check some of those bits that may have dried out in the fridge. And uh, because a lot of knife cuts happen on here in the field when you're taking it off the spine and the ribs, some of those bits can get a bit untidy. So just come along and whittle away anything that doesn't look like you want to put it on your plate and eat it, get rid of it. don't need to trim too aggressively if you don't want to. It's all probably perfectly safe for human consumption, but a lot of this stuff here actually makes up um, quite a lot of the diet of our dogs. The funky stuff we don't feel like eating, so it doesn't go to waste. When you're at the point where it's mostly cleaned up, then it just comes down to what you like the look of. Um, I like to square off this end here because that little dangly part came off the pelvis and it's usually an untidy spot where I get my knife in straight away. And then here we make a decision based on how we're really going to cook it. Really thin part down the end here. I'm gonna cut that off and put that in our stir fry in our cut it off and put it in our stir fry meat as well, excuse me. Depending on the way you're gonna cook this, this part will cook at a different rate to this part because this part's wider and flatter and this part's a little bit rounder. So if I cut my back straps in half, I'll normally do it right about here. So this piece will cook about the same and this piece will cook about the same. For now, I'm just gonna leave that hole and I might back seal it up and I'll make a decision later. I'm taking the part of back leg. I usually prefer a knife um, like this one with the black handle because it's got that slight up sweep to the tip so it's a little bit easier to use holding it like this. Uh, but again, you can do it with pretty well any knife. Now, um, you can see there's a little bit of funk from where it's dried out. 
um, this part here, if you can imagine the animal's lying down and this is where its butt is, facing up this direction where its head is, this part here usually gets blood on it when you're taking it off the pelvis. So this is the inside of the deer's left leg. We've got the top side muscle, the round muscle, the rump, and over here, we've got the silver side. And there are a bunch of other little ones here and there that kind of all attached in there and people in different parts of the world call them something different. Sometimes they call this the um, top round and the bottom round. And this one might be the sirloin tip. Either way, it's not really that important what you call them as long as you know how to take them apart. We did a reasonable job of taking these legs off in the field. There's a little bit of hair on it. Um, some people like to completely clean that off uh, before they start to take them apart. I generally get my wife that because I hate doing that. But I've also had good success taking the legs apart and cutting those bits off afterwards anyway, only because um, you tend to trim off so much of that messy stuff, that's where a lot of the hair is and it'll come off with it. You can see some seams running through the legs. Essentially what we're going to do is follow these seams and take everything out in really big pieces and then we'll trim them all off, um, well we'll trim them up afterwards and lay them all out so we can see the main meat bearing cuts that you get off a back leg. Okay, um, even here you can see some seams and you can sort of follow the femur bone which will start here and end here. Um, but I typically like to start on the outside of the leg because this is the easiest seam to see which goes between our round muscle or our silicone tip and our silver side or our um, bottom round or outside round. So, just if you haven't done this before, just take a few bits here with your knife and you can see there, it's just, it's opened up. You see that? Now I can actually shove a finger in there and really get in there and you can see there's a very clear join where those muscles are. Okay? I might even turn into this camera here. So, just take your time and follow where that seam goes. If there's a lot of fat on the animal here, sometimes it can be hard to tell which seam to go in because this here looks like a seam and this here looks like a seam. And honestly, if you hit the wrong one, it's not the end of the world anyway. You can see right up in there. Just follow that right up to the top. Some people will actually, uh, if you take the back leg off the pelvis properly, you get all this piece of rump here. If you just hit that ball joint and then you cut it straight off here, you leave all this on the animal. It's some of the best meat, well, certainly some of my favorite meat. Some people will actually bring their knife up here and cut square down and save this entire piece here as a rump. So certainly in Australia, if you buy a rump steak, that's what you're buying. But I like to take the seams all the way up to the top. Um, just tend to find it's a little bit cleaner that way, especially on a buck like this who was <laughs> It's pretty ripe, so there's a lot of funky silver side, uh, silver skins, sorry, on the inside of the rump muscle like that. I mean, if anybody's eaten a rump steak, they know there are actually a couple of seams within the steak itself there. So, yeah, I tend to do that on smaller animals, but on a nice big one like this, I just take them all apart. Now, this seam here, you can actually see goes around here and the back of the heel muscle. So just take a little bit of the time, just using the tip of the knife. If you start cutting meat like this, you've gone too far, come up a bit more. And just follow that entire seam down. You can see it peeling away there. And you'll lay the whole thing open. You would have to make a decision once you start getting to this point here because there's actually um, a piece that attaches to the side of the silver side, which some, I mean, I don't know what, I call it like the mock tenderloin or whatever. Some people call it the eye of round. In any case, it's just here. So I've got the silver side muscle in my hand here. 
for this namesake, obviously because of these big pieces of silver skin. You can either take the silver side off here and then take this ivory end off separately, or what I like to do is actually follow the seam here and take it all off in one piece. But while you're here and you've got the entire deer's leg opened up, grab as much of this fatty, waxy stuff as you can and cut it out because there's a big gland on the inside of this and it does not taste good. If you roast a whole venison haunch and you bite into this, it's gonna be extra, extra funky. On a really young animal, it doesn't matter. But on an old one like this, it does. You can actually see, if I cut that open there, where am I looking? You can actually see that gland. If you smell it, yeah, doesn't smell real nice. So, that's why I cut that out. Back to the silver side here. So, maybe it's easier to see now. If I pull that out here, the silver side in my left hand, this is the eye of round, and this here is actually the other side of the top side. So you can see quite clearly, I could follow this seam along here, that I like to take it off in one clean piece like this and trim it up later. Things can get a little bit tight up in here. So just push the leg bone for a bit of leverage. You can see. There we go. So I trimmed that one up in a tick. Now, for whatever reason, I like to trim around the base of that piece of rump just here, and then follow the femur bone down all the way along here. The femur bone's literally right in there to take off the round muscle or the sirloin tip. Now, don't be afraid, don't, you don't need to saw on the bone by any means, but if you run your knife along the bone, you're gonna leave less meat on the bone. So you can see there, I'm actually running it straight along that piece of bone. You can see where the meat goes around the knee joint here. So I'm just tracing around the bone now. At this stage, I could just run my knife square and cut this whole piece off. But for whatever reason, I like to whittle away from both sides and take it off in one in one go. Okay, rear leg muscles. We'll start with the silver side. So follow the seam between the silver side and the eye of round or the mock tenderloin or whatever you want to call it. You can see what they call it there. And just whittle away anything that looks a little bit gross to you. Leave it on if you don't mind, honestly. Like it's not gonna hurt you, it's just more for presentation than anything else in our house because we feed a lot of people who aren't hunters. Same as the back strap. Run your knife along underneath the silver skin here. The sharper it is, the easier time you'll have. No one wants to eat that. It's one of the toughest ligaments in the whole animal. Same on this side. It's very hard to take it off without taking a little bit too much meat, but do your best. You can always shave. If you take a bit too much meat on something like that, just as an example, you can always just hang your knife over the edge of a cutting board so you're not 
being hindered by the depth of that handle and you can just push a whole bunch of that mince off well mince meat the, the meat, meat the meat that you would use for mince meat oh my goodness okay Depending on the time of year, you'll actually have a lot of fat on the outside of the back leg of a deer. Because this was fairly late in the rut, this dude didn't really have uh, <laughs> any fat on him. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit of fat build up here. But when you get to the nitty gritty of a muscle like this, it's all about just making it look like something you want to eat. This is all part of the silver side, but if you took off the rump muscle, like I mentioned before, this would have come off with the rump. I find this a really good piece to cook by itself as a little chef's snack uh, if you're having a barbecue. But again, this will probably end up being bits of stir fry for me because, um, well, they're one of our favorite things to cook actually, wild game stir fries. But I'm just whittling it off that piece of dried up fatty outside you can see it's pretty there's not as much meat there as what you think actually it's mostly just fat silver side's a good one for jerky it's got a really good grain in it a good bit of tube I tend to uh, cook them on the barbecue, almost just like a really big steak, as long as you can control your heat, fine. Um, slices up very nicely. Look at that, gorgeous. Okay. There are lots of seams you can find between the um, top side and the round if you just feel your way through there the most obvious one should reveal itself you can see just here again it looks super untidy right now this is a favorite cut for people to roast it's also a favorite cut to turn into um, jerky a lot of people in Australia certainly who make jerky uh, beef jerky like to go and buy a whole piece of top side off a beef kettle so I was going to say before, I don't tend to worry too much about all this discoloration here because this is a muscle cap that runs along the top of the top side. So I just whittle away at one of the edges until I get to the point where I'm getting a pretty good handle on things. And uh, you can actually just pull it off and it'll be very clean straight away. already looks a hell of a lot nicer. This little piece here can just get taken off for a bit of stir fry or mince. Same as this part here actually, a lot of people like to cut big steaks along here, which is great. I actually like to take this piece here off and just have the entire uh, pure top side there by itself. This is another good piece to cook up as a little chef's treat if you're roasting up a lot of big bits for a barbecue or something. Do be mindful though, there's actually a bit of a vein that runs through there which is a little bit gross. So um, you might want to open it up and take out that piece. If I... See there, vein. So I like to just come on the outside of it and try and cut a bit of that out. Again, 
again, similar to the back strap, I like to square up the top side just so it cooks as close to evenly as possible. And where you took his back leg off in the field might be a little bit funky like what I have here. So I like to just come and trim away some of that. Just so it looks like something I might want to give to a guest if they were sharp here. Beautiful piece of meat. Get a little bit more complicated here because we've actually got more muscles looking at us than what we originally realized. This part underneath here, I believe, is called a tri-tip. It's another little uh, cap that goes over the top of the round muscles. So, you can come and follow a couple of seams just here. that muscle very nicely and again uh, reduces the amount of cleaning up that you have to do because the cap kind of protects it it's like its own little piece of skin this muscle here is a good one to stake it's hard to um, get all the sinews out of it because there are just so many that go through it the main thing we do with this actually if we don't um, need a hell of a lot of mince or Jerky is actually just roasted whole. You know, it's uh, it's a fairly even size, cooks nice and evenly, goes well. Here, the tri-tip sits inside this piece that we ripped off the top of the round muscle, and this here is, I guess, a bunch of other muscles that I collectively refer to anyway as the rump. So you can pull away a few sinews here and expose what you need. These rumps are just some of the best pieces of meat on the whole animal to cook. This one's obviously a little bit dried out. Um, but again, a little bit of dried out skin to cut off is better than something sitting in its own juices and getting super funky. No different to any other dry age meat that you buy in the supermarket. And leave that little piece on there, but I like to just chuck it into my mince or stir fry pile simply because it means everything else here will cook evenly. Round, silver side, rump, top side, bunch of other funky bits for stir fry, and the shank meat. Fantastic, mate.